Ah, welcome, welcome. In today's video, I'll point my analytic gaze upon Heroes of Might and Magic 4 as part of my yearly tradition of reviewing Heroes games. Heroes 4 is a very good experience when compared to the rest of the Hero series, whether we look at titles that came before it or the ones that came after it. It is by far the oddest one out for a myriad of reasons, but it's also not as bad as you might have heard it is. Maybe. There are lots of dubious things that need to be addressed when talking about pretty much anything that makes up Heroes 4. We need to address the combat, the walking animations, the traveling monsters, the spawn rate of monsters, the skill system, and the storytelling. But before we get into it, I need to preface everything I'm about to say by telling you that the Heroes 4 we got was most likely not the one the developers initially envisioned because it was developed during the final years of 3DO, which in turn owned New World Computing, which had been making Might and Magic games since 1986. Just to get a better sense of things, Heroes 4 was released in March-April of 2002, with a large number of New World Computing employees being fired on the 15th of April 2002, for 3DO to then file for bankruptcy in 2003. Basically, the amount of time and development resources that went into Heroes 4 was obviously not what it should have been. With that being said, on to the analysis now. And let's dive right into it with the combat. The idea, concept that they probably started with is good. Switch the battlefield combat to an isometric-like perspective, make everything 3D, no more pre-rendered sprites, and gameplay-wise, get the hero in on the action taking them away from their somewhat aloof, supervising, tactician sort of role, basically overseeing the battlefield and intervening here and there with spells. But the execution is... woof. And the hex grid is also gone, replaced by what looked like a checkered layer on which one would normally apply a texture. Combat just feels less tactical than it should, less tight, less clear, it is simply less than its predecessors. I really don't know what happened in the animation sector, because most of the units walk with such a wide gait that they all look like they're shitting themselves. I'm sure this was due to limitations of the time and the fact that they most likely didn't have the resources to rig individual skeleton animations for each model, but damn, it made combat even harder to take seriously. Allowing individual groups of monsters to roam the map sans heroes is a very particular characteristic of this entry in the series. It definitely did not happen till this point in time and it's a weird choice. I don't know how I feel about it, but I can tell you how I feel about your monster spawning each day instead of once per week. I did not like it. It makes more sense I guess, in a sort of realistic approach sort of way, I'll grant you that, but the Might and Magic series is anything but realistic. It was so much more comfortable and easier to plan for to simply recruit troops once per week and the series returned to that in subsequent entries. Now, the maps themselves look really good. As far as the aesthetics of the game is concerned, the maps have considerably more visual depth than Heroes 3, since they are also way more 3D as well, so it has that going for it, but then it squanders that success with the town screens. The town screens obviously got a 3D overhaul as well, in tune with the new art direction, and it's... well, they exist. To be honest, they are not very pretty to look at. They were made in that period of time when many developers set aside particular art styles in favor of 3D graphics that were striving for realism, but the computing power just wasn't there yet. The town screens just look super busy and bunched together even though this game introduced choices in your town buildings. Namely, you would have to choose between two options of buildings at most ranks and would then have to live with those choices. But there were also a bunch of extra buildings introduced that occupied space, making the town screens look very cluttered. One cool addition to the franchise was the caravan building, which allowed you to purchase monsters from buildings from around the map that were still under your control. This is such a solid idea that it has reappeared in later installments. And since I'm on the subject of the town screen, why was the marketplace moved to the main map screen and it already exists from the get-go? I swear, it took me a bit of time to track it down when I needed it because I was used to having to build marketplaces in any faction city. 
as I mentioned earlier, heroes get to play a more active role in Heroes 4. They are right there near their minions on the front lines. This makes them considerably more vulnerable to getting killed. Sure, you can resurrect them later, as long as your party survives, but this makes the confusing fights that much more problematic. One interesting thing you can do though, is that you can have several heroes in the same party, so you could, theoretically, field a bunch of heroes and no creatures. Although I do not know how functional that makeup would be, because the heroes themselves are fairly weak. The skill system was changed as well, making it at the same time simpler but more complicated. You have 5 main skills which will have 3 sub skills that branch out of them, which you will have to choose depending on your initial class and general RNG. This would normally mean a more streamlined experience, but they also fundamentally changed how skills worked and what they did. So everything you knew from previous titles won't help you very much in this one. Depending on the choices you make in your character development, you will later on gain a particular class title with specific thematic abilities. Cool idea, but due to them changing everything about how the skills work, I did not really get to enjoy this part of the game very much, cause I never got to it. I think inarguably the best part of Heroes 4 is the stories it tells and how it tells them. The stories are about survivors of a cataclysm trying to rebuild their lives and societies in a new world that seems to be fairly identical to the one they left, but they were all fairly character centric. While the heroes titles have tried to tell stories in the games preceding and following Heroes 4, I never really got into them as much as I did with 4. Maybe it was because they were always a secondary sort of thing or because it never really felt like you were part of the story. But in Heroes 4, they managed to get that balance somehow right and made me care about the stories being told, in which I was oftentimes a major player. And the extraordinary thing is that it did this through text. Walls of text would assault you and whenever I'd start reading them, I'd get sucked into the story. Maybe it's because I tend to like reading heavy RPGs, like the Shadowrun Return series for instance. Maybe it's because I'm also an amateur writer and dream of a future when random people will get to read my drag. But for whatever reason, the storytelling in Heroes 4 really clicked for me. Heroes 4 is a tedious game to get into, for all the reasons I've outlined. And at least from my perspective, the cool things in it do not outweigh the trial and errorness required to not constantly die, even though you are super invested in the story. And I was. The advantage is that I can now simply look up on the net the story of Goldoth Half Dead without having to actually play the game, because I tried that campaign several times and I failed it more than that. Heroes 4 changed a lot of things from how they were done previously. It tried a different way of doing them, and while that change and experimentation is never bad in itself, their finished physical result are those we have to consider. And when we look at Heroes 4 as a finished result, it is fairly lacking. It is clear that Heroes 4 simply did not work for me. It didn't work in 2005 or 6 when I played it initially and it did not work for me in 2020. I gave it several chances but ultimately it simply is not for me. But that doesn't mean it can be for you. Let me know your thoughts on Heroes 4 in the comments and on the Heroes franchise in general. I'm curious to read them. Hey there dear watcher who's still watching, thank you very much for sticking around. I've recently started a Patreon page, so if you want to and can throw a couple of bucks my way to help me get more games and improve my recording setup, go on there and check out the tiers and rewards. If you can do that but still want to help me grow my channel, please consider subscribing, turning on the notification bell and of course sharing the video far and wide. I've been Steven Nonsense, thank you very much for watching, see you next time and have a great rest of the day.